Good day, everyone. It's Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Bringing Jesus to your face. Amen. Continuing spiritual warfare. In this last series of spiritual warfare, this is going to be the last one, I want to share um, some experiences that I had. You can learn from my ignorance, from the mistakes that I had made, or um, I'm going to talk about a couple of churches that had problems. Um, I was in a church not too long ago after I was radically changed by Jesus Christ. You know, I was saved, but I wasn't walking mighty. I, I, I didn't know, in mighty in the scriptures, I didn't know spiritual warfare, and my people perish for lack of knowledge. There's a small church of tight-knit believers. The children were homeschooled, you know, the best mom at a subject, she would be the one teaching the children for that hour or for that day. We used to go to the movies together. I was involved in the youth group. We'd play together. Basically, we met a lot. But we weren't strong in spiritual warfare. And I'm looking back now because this part of my life was devastating. One day something happened. There was a there was a, a church not too far away. It was a larger church. And some of the people from this small church I was going to would go visit on an off night. Now, looking back, I now know that the pastor of this larger church was having a secretive, adulterous affair. After a very short period of time, the people in the small church I was going to started committing adultery. People that I would never have guessed would be unfaithful. People that prayed over the offerings. People that prayed over communion. Committing adultery. And not only were they committing adultery, they were flaunting it. I knew these people personally. They were friends. And I was floored at their behavior. It didn't make sense. And normally when something doesn't, it isn't like 2 plus 2 equals 4 and someone doesn't understand it. Usually there's a demon there somewhere. This blew my mind. I'm not really sure if there's something called a spirit of adultery, but this was, this was contagious. Other people started having marital problems really quickly. Didn't take long. Now this obviously brings me to Jezebel. Revelation 2:20 20 through 23. Jesus is talking to a church here. Jesus is talking to a church. But I have this against thee that thou sufferest the woman Jezebel who calleth herself a prophetess. And she teacheth and seduceth my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time that she should repent, and she willeth not to repent of her fornication. Behold, I cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of her works. Of her works. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he that searcheth the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto each one of you according to your works. Now, Jezebel in the Old Testament, if you remember Elijah, just after destroying like 400, is it 400 or 450 prophets of Baal, all of a sudden this Jezebel woman freaks him out. I'm like, why why did he just commit that act? And then, you know, he's freaking out about Jezebel. Why would the strong prophet Elijah, a strong man in the Lord, be afraid of a little woman? I just, anyway, here we find Jezebel 
later in the book of Revelations, wreaking havoc in the church. This is in the church. Notice that she exalts herself and calls herself a prophetess. But we can tell from her fruits, you know, you shall know them by their fruits. Jesus is talking about false prophets. She's committing adultery. And she not only does that, she teaches others to do so. She wreaks complete havoc in the church. And there's one line I want you to pay attention to, and sometimes spiritual warfare has to go this route. It has to go this route. Jesus said in that line, but I have this against thee. Jesus has this against the church, that thou sufferest the woman Jezebel. If you read it in the Bible in basic English, Revelation 2.20, but I have this against you, that you let the woman Jezebel, you let... He's talking to the church. The church lets the woman Jezebel say she's a prophet and give false teachings. So the church allowed her to do this. They allowed her to commit fornication and teach people to do adultery. So once you see something like this in your church, in, you know, 2 plus 2, doesn't equal four to these people. There's a spirit behind it. It's the wrong kind of spirit. This reminds me of the fornicator in the Corinthian church. If you remember the fornicator in the Corinthian church, this was pretty bad. And here's how Paul dealt with it. I mean, if you think Jezebel is a person, a demon, a spirit, or a principality, here's how Paul dealt with it. Okay, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, it's actually reported that there is fornication among you. Sounds just like Jezebel. He's talking to the church. And such fornication is not even among the Gentiles, that one of you hath his father's wife, and you are puffed up and did not rather mourn. See, they didn't, they didn't catch it. it. Two plus two did not equal four to them. That he hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, being absent in the body, but present in spirit, have already, as though I were present, judged him that hath wrought this wrong. In the name of our Lord Jesus, you being gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus, to li- deliver one such, such a one unto Satan, for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Now, here he's about to say something key here. In this, you know, it's like an amputation. It's an amputation. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out the old leaven that ye may be a new lump, even as you are unleavened. For our Passover also hath been sacrificed, even Christ. So apparently Paul was dealing with something type like a Jezebel type problem. Notice that they not only let the boy continue in this congregation, but they were puffed up. They were excited about this illicit, adulterous, incestual, (laughs) I mean, adulterous relationship. Doesn't that make sense that they should have been upset? But no, two plus two did not make the Christian four. So Paul's like, kick him out of the church. Kick him out of the church Get him out of your presence, or your whole congregation will be suffering. This will spread. And I saw that happen in my small little church. A couple people went to the larger church. On an off night, that pastor was having a secret adulterous affair. Somehow, that spread. Now, in the church that I was attending, they didn't kick the adulterer out of the church. The entire church is now closed. It closed quickly. That church started getting all sorts of problems. Others started having marital problems quickly. People that had been married for decades. People left. That church is no more. Sometimes warfare means doing the hard thing and taking the knife to the ugly part and cutting it off to the offending part. You know, if your hand offend you, cut it off. Now another story from another church. 
Conrad Rocks is supported by its listeners and by its blog readers. That means people just like you. You can support Conrad Rocks by PayPal or by credit card. You'll find the contribution widget conveniently located in the sidebar of conradrocks.net. If this ministry has touched your life, please prayerfully consider an offering. And remember, Jesus Jesus rules. Yes, Jesus does rule. I was going to, before the commercial there, I was telling you about another story. You guys, please share this with your friends. This is very important. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share it on G's Plus. Share it on any of your social media. I'm telling you about some of my ignorance that cost me and churches. This other story, when I was walking highly in the prophetic, I was still not new in spiritual warfare, but I was seeing him. I was getting doctrine and stuff like that, and I was uh, at a point where I was watching television basically in the spirit. I was so, I mean, I couldn't turn it off. I was praying hours a day, worshiping. I spent a lot of time with God. Anyway, before the meetings that we'd have, we'd have these prophetic meetings. And this one night, before the service, very, very vividly, I saw a sheep that was, it was a young sheep. It was grazing off by itself. And I saw this horrible lion run up and just devour the sheep. You know, I didn't really know what that meant. It was shocking. But that very night during the meeting, we received a phone call from a friend of a new person to the ministry, a new convert. They had found her body naked in the apartment with no apparent cause of death. She had complained for a few days of being tormented by demons. She said that demons, she complained that demons were trying to kill her. Now a couple of things here. Knowing warfare is important. Also, being off by yourself is not a good idea. Satan tries to get a sheep off by itself and to devour it. I'm not sure why God allowed this to be. I've often struggled with finding the the reason behind the situation, but I'll never forget this girl. She'd come out of a, a really hard life. She wasn't very old. She was a new convert, and she was alone. And we didn't know she was alone like that. We, we didn't know. I mean, she hadn't really got plugged in to the ministry or anything. We She never told us about her struggles. So if you're new and you're going through warfare, it's a good idea to call a friend. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm going to tell you. Pray in agreement. Like an AA, you know, they say get a sponsor. Well, I'm going to tell you, if you're new, if you're new in the body of Christ, we are in a war, and this is not a game of chess. This is serious. You know, find, get discipled. For those of you that witness to people, be prepared. You need to disciple. I mean, Jesus says, make disciples. Now, another thing I want to enforce in this last podcast on spiritual warfare, it's a good idea to practice prayer and fasting, praying in the Spirit and fasting in the off-season. And we can, when I say the off-season, not when you're, you know, just anyway, not when you're going through warfare, but even before and during and after. It's not easy, I know. Fasting is not an easy thing to do. Trust me, I know. Conquering our flesh and following our spirit is a very difficult thing to do. The spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh desires things that kill it. It desires a donut. It desires ice cream. It desires things that kill it. But we walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. Now, I'm going to read Matthew 17, 19 through 21. Uh, you've heard it before, but I'm going to talk about it again. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place you shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now the disciples had the authority to cast out demons, but none of them, not one of them, could cast this particular, this kind of demon out. 
prayer and fasting is what was required. And if you'll notice in this story, Jesus didn't drop everything and start fasting in prayer. He had already fasted 40 days. Okay, so prayer and fasting in the off season, before, during, and after, subdues the flesh, strengthens the spirit. Now, Paul ends the whole armor of God picture in Ephesians 6 with this verse. With all prayer and supplication, praying at all seasons in the spirit and watching thereunto in all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. Paul says at the end of this whole armor thing that we're to be praying at all times and all seasons and in the spirit. <laughs> okay? This is spiritual warfare. We've got to pray in the spirit. But notice the last thing he says, and this is kind of what I wanted to drive home. Watching thereunto in all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. We need to keep our spiritual eyes open. Many, many people ask me why when they're praying in the Spirit with their eyes closed, down on their knees, and they're seeking God, why they see faces pop up. Well, this is why. We're, we're supposed to pray for the saints. That's warfare. When we're praying for them, we're doing warfare. We pray protection over them. God will guide you. And also, you know, if we love our neighbor as ourself, which is like the second greatest commandment, we will pray as diligently for our neighbor as we pray for ourselves. Don't be selfish in prayer. We're a body. We need to pray for each other. Well, this is concluding the series of Conrad Rock Spiritual Warfare. Hopefully, you learned something from this. I want to make sure that you have the tools to equip the saints. Hopefully, you can uh, take some ground for Jesus. Be an overcomer. You know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, for when we fail, the blood of the Lamb is there for grace. And the word of our testimony. So get to know your scriptures, because the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher. Angels, demons, poltergeists, ghosts, astral projection, telepathy, telekinesis, levitation. In my book, Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey, I discuss many of my supernatural experiences pre and post salvation. I discuss what it takes to see in the kingdom of heaven. Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey is available on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle. Thank you for listening to Conrad Rocks. If you like what you hear, Please share your favorite episodes with your friends on Facebook or Twitter. Consider patronizing the sponsors at ConradRocks.com. You can also give a PayPal contribution on the sidebar at ConradRocks.com. Spread the word. Spread the love. I'm a robot and I love Conrad. Because Conrad Rocks.